Hey guys, welcome back to another Realm of the Mad God video, and for this video's topic, I want to talk about how to efficiently max a character. So, back in June, I made a video talking about which dungeons are the best for getting each individual stat potion, and while I recommend you check that out before watching this one, I want to still make a more general purpose guide on maxing to help you streamline your experience so that you can spend less time and energy reaching 8-8 and more time actually doing the dungeons that require those stats. I say that because while it's still a very integral part of the game, maxing your character isn't exactly the main priority of the game anymore like it used to be. In fact, I see it as more of a hassle or those really annoying unskippable tutorial quests that you gotta do at the start of a video game. There are definitely many avenues of approach to getting a character to 8-8, so I'm gonna do my best to cover the most efficient way possible, so let's just get right into it. Before I even begin, I should also mention an important note to expedite the process and make it more enjoyable, bring friends. I have no friends jokes aside, Realm of the Mad God functions in sort of a bell curve where while you definitely don't want to play with too many people, you also don't want to play with too little. When I first got serious in maxing, I played with uh, two people I met in-game and we were able to push the grind a lot faster since more people generally means quicker dungeon clears, like having all three of us run in a demon abyss to find the boss room. I think the sweet spot you want to reach is anywhere between 2 to 4 since it's like the best party to pace ratio, give or take. Ordinarily, I don't really put too much thought into the order of how I max my characters, if anything, I just kind of sit in a nexus and wait for key pops and max randomly that way, or I just, you know, do the quest chest. But if I were to go at it the old-fashioned way in like sort of a speedrun fashion, I'd most definitely go at it in this order. Dexterity, Speed, Attack, Defense, Wisdom, Life, Mana, and Vitality. You might be asking why I chose Vitality last and it's because Prevailing Wisdom knows this is the most useless stat in the game, especially if you have a good pet. And even if you don't have a good pet with high level heal, you still really don't find Vitality to be useful anywhere. And so that's the one stat you max only because you want the 8-8 Grave, not the 7-8. Although, I personally find the 7-8 Grave a little bit cooler than the 8-8 one, but I might just be in the minority. Upon reaching level 20, the first two stats in my opinion you want to immediately get out of the way are Dexterity and Speed, because not only are these two the most successful potions in the early game, but also the best for maximizing your tempo. Dexterity helps you kill things faster, and Speed helps you move faster, that's pretty much implied. Starting first with Dex, around this point in time you'll have hopefully gotten your hands on some mid-tiered items like a tier 6 to 10 weapon, tier 2 to 4 ability, tier 7 to 11 armor, and like a tier 3 ring which is more than enough to solo a good amount of the early bosses if you don't have anyone else to play with, although I still highly recommend you do. The three main dungeons you want to go into for decks and speed are the Sprite World, Snake Pit, and Magic Woods, with the Sprite World giving you all the decks you ever need, Snake Pit for speed, and Magic Woods for both. That's arguably the fastest way to do these two stats since I'm under the impression you're starting out on a brand new character with no equips or anything. Fortunately, both the Snake Pit and Sprite World are very easy to come by, Pro tip, if you're having a rough time finding Medusas in the Godlands, don't forget, there are quite a few lesser gods you can get snake pits from, such as the Flayer, Lizard God, and Minotaur to name a few. As for Sprite World, it's super easy to find, even in crowded Godlands, so you don't need to worry too much about that. For the Magic Woods, I don't suggest you go out of your way to find them, since it does have a noticeably lower drop rate than the former two, but if you ever stumble upon one, you should definitely take up the opportunity because the woods can drop you both a speed and dex if you get full soulbound. Unfortunately, there's not much in the form of equipment upgrades that you can get from these dungeons, although the only exception is that you can get a little quality of life boost your abilities since Limon can drop tier 5 abilities. And also I should mention the sprite world has a chance to drop defense potions, which you will definitely need later. On to the next stat, which is attack. Generally speaking, that's the third one I go to max. Some people say you should max defense as soon as possible, but to be honest, there aren't really any easy sources of defense to get early in the game, and at your stage of progression, the toxic sewers is way too dangerous and inefficient to do right now, so you'll have to mostly rely on your max speed to survive through the majority of the early to mid game. Attack is my next priority, because once again, the faster you can kill enemies, the faster you can clear dungeons and whatnot. The main dungeons that drop attack are the Manor of Immortals and Puppet Master's Theater, although I recommend neither of them, except, okay, maybe you can do a couple manors if you want since they are relatively accessible, but the two other ways I feel people don't give enough credit to are Sprite World's native Sprite Gods and the actual Godlands. Remember how in the Sprite World you occasionally run into a native Sprite God, like the purple one, the same copy as the one in the Godlands? I personally find myself getting attack potions at a higher pace by just going into Sprite Worlds and searching for these guys than going into a Puppet Theater, which is just much more dangerous. On average, you'll find roughly about two Sprite Gods in every Sprite World, sometimes even three, so while you're farming for Dexterity, you should walk around the entire map to catch every single one. The ones in here have a much higher chance of dropping attack pots than the ones in Godlands, so chances are you might be able to get one attack potion every two Sprite Worlds, more if you have a drop rate booster. 
Aside from that, Godlines farming is also a very viable way to farm for attack potions as well as defense if you want to kill two birds with one stone. The Sprite God, all three constructs, Flying Brain and White Demon all have a chance to drop an attack pot and with drop rate boosters you actually can get quite a few, especially if you have entire Godlines to yourself. If you do choose the Godland farming method, be sure to go into a relatively empty realm so you can farm without other players running around and KSing. That way, you get more potential chances since fresh Godlands can have up to like hundreds of gods to take out. It's actually pretty satisfying. So at this point, you should be maxed in dexterity, speed, and attack. If the class you're playing has a whiz mod like Paladin, Necromancer, Priest, or Sorcerer, this is when you want to farm wisdom, and fortunately there are some very easy ways to do that. Your main dungeon to farm wisdom is the Undead Lair, which already used to be a fast source of wisdom, but ever since treasure rooms were added, you can get upwards of 3 or even more wisdom per UDL. I think at one time I had like 4 treasure rooms in a single dungeon, which gave me 5 wisdom pots, although just bear in mind that not every UDL is guaranteed a treasure room similar to Demon Abyss and Snake Pit, but it is still in your best interest to go hunting for them. Alternatives would be the Curse Library and Mad Lab. While you can consistently come across them throughout the Godlands, just be aware, they do take significantly longer and are generally a lot harder to complete than the Undead Lair. And since our primary focus is how to efficiently max, I wouldn't recommend it unless you just want like something more fun to do. Even then though, Mad Lab might not be that fun given the amount of like the amount of things that just stall for time and make it harder for you to rush. Curse Library is a little bit better given that you have a chance to get that really sexy Deathless Crossbow, but apart from that, I would just stick to Undead Lair. I should also mention that if you stumble across a Candyland Hunting Grounds, that dungeon can yield practically an infinite source of attack, defense, and wisdom. So if you have the patience to farm for, I don't know, 2-3 to three or 4-5 to five hours, then you can outright max out your attack, wisdom, and defense in one single dungeon, just so long as you don't disconnect. The only drawback is be ready to stare at pink and purple for hours on end. It's a little bit annoying to look at after a while. Four stats out of the way, four more to go. At this point, we want to finally max out that defense stat, so there are several ways to go about this. One, you can simply just chill in godlands and farm similar to attack pots because the slime god, end god, leviathan, and beholder can all drop defense, but I actually think the best way to max your defense stat is instead of farming for it to just trade. Defense potions at the time this video is released cost like anywhere between 2 speed or dexterity, which is very easy to get. Once again, if you're looking for a fast way to max out your defense, you're mostly going to just have to find sprite worlds because you can generally do 3-4 to four sprite worlds in the time it takes you to do 1 toxic sewers. That's how bad it is when it comes to early game access to defense. Supply and demand fluctuates on a day-to-day -day basis, so you're just going to have to hope to find enough people willing to sell defense pots for two of the other rainbow pots. By the way, if you're still working on maxing attack, they are the same cost as defense, give or take. So from this point on, you should be 5-8, time to tackle life and mana. Okay, so for mana, you have quite a few options to choose from, such as Ice Cave, Ocean Trench, Parasite Chambers, and Crawling Depths, meaning you have your pick of the litter for every realm you walk into. But I'm actually going to advise that you max out both life and mana in another way, do Oryx's Castle. Of course, you know, like while you're waiting to get into Oryx Castle, if you ever come across those dungeons, then definitely take care of them. But with how many deaths there's been since Oryx 3's release, thousands of players are grasping at straws when it comes to wine cellar tops, most notably the T6 abilities. It's a lot more RNG dependent, yes, but since realms clear at a reasonably fast rate even when there isn't a clearing event, if you can snag a valuable T6 ability such as a G Cookie, Kala Sword, or G Gen, that can net you anywhere between 5 to 6 life potions, which is the same as doing anywhere between 2 to 3 tombs, maybe even more considering most public tombs practically reduce your chance of getting life to zero. Those life pots can effortlessly be swapped out from mana since one life is roughly equivalent to 6 or 5 mana. In other words, those 5 to 6 life potions you get could get your mana stat maxed out instantly. Even if you don't get your hands on one of the melee T6 abilities, just about any ability or weapon is worth a life pot or several. By extension, you actually can just max out all 8 of your stats by going for wine cellar after wine cellar and then just trading the drops for life potions. Following that, you can exchange them for the other 7 stats. I am anticipating some people to disagree with me on this being the fastest way to max a character and that doing a bunch of lost halls, nests, or fungals is more effective. I share the same opinion, the catch is not everyone has the ability or wherewithal to safely chain those dungeons over and over again, which is why this is the next best option. In fact, that's mostly why I suggest you cap your dex, speed, defense, and attack as soon as possible because, for the most part, Oryx 2 can help you take care of the rest through sheer value of his drops. Weapons and abilities, they sell exceptionally well, and if you can get your hands on even like an exalted health ring, that goes for a couple life right there. In fact, I wager, wine cellar tops will inflate more and more as people just get access to O3 a lot more conveniently and lose their characters. 
Demand is definitely getting a lot higher with not that much supply. So if you're watching this video anywhere between its release and a couple months out, like towards the latter end of month of the Mad God, there will probably be a lot of Oryx events, so this is the best time to farm for them. If you're watching this video, let's say, I don't know, a year from now, then simply just go onto Realmai and check the current prices just by going to like, you know, current offers and seeing what people are selling life potions for. Oh, and uh, there's also the Vitality stat, but honestly, your only two options are Demon Abyss and Curse Library, neither of which are that easy to clear unless you're really good at rushing. In fact, I just maxed this stat out by trading Life Potions for Vitality anyway. You might be asking if there are any other ways to do it besides trading and farming Sprite Worlds and Godlands nonstop, but honestly, that's just the best way to do it. Possible alternatives would be to farm Tinker Quest Chest, which is a viable method, but given that the chests can be kind of fickle with what potions they drop, I'd say only do them if they're convenient because not every dungeon is that easy to find and considering how you have to do 3 or 4 of them per day, it's, you know. I'm assuming many people watching this video who actually need it don't have the right equips or stats or knowledge to do these dungeons easily. Anyway, that's about it. I know I dragged the video on slightly longer than it had to and I could have just summed it up, but I wanted to make sure to explain as much as I could since this was how I maxed most of my characters in the beginning before I have all the 8 I do now. These days, I mostly just do quest chests and lost halls and then convert all the life and mana potions to rainbows, but obviously not everyone has that luxury. And so I hope this video was helpful to those who needed it. And if you have any questions regarding anything from this video, do not hesitate to ask in the comment section below. But try to do your research, you know, most of the time, you get the hang of your own way to max a character. Everyone has different styles, and the sooner you develop your own, the better. If you have any friends who are also wondering the best way to max a character quickly and efficiently, try sending them this video, and maybe it can help them out as well. But that's it for today. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope to see you again soon in the next video. Take care.